Kevin Martin here, your UT admissions guy. In this workshop, I've recreated and reproduced, with permission, a real UT Austin student application, and I want to walk you through what an admissions reviewer might be thinking as they're reading and trying to assess which admission score to assign this applicant. We'll look at the essays and the resume and discuss the results at the end. I hope you enjoy this video. Welcome to this application review workshop where I recreate and reproduce a real UT Austin applicant's resume, essays, and biographical information. Um, they've given me permission and I've anonymized their personal details while I walk you through what an admissions reviewer might be thinking as they're reading, assessing, and trying to determine this student's personal achievement index score. And that score accounts for half of the admissions criteria when deciding who gets spaces um, at specific colleges and schools and majors at UT Austin. So this applicant is to the Cockrell School of Engineering for Mechanical Engineering. Um, it's notable that they attend a small rural Christian private school um, and they live in a small town in the central Texas area. And they come from a, a middle to high income family where they're college educated. So um, there's not any signs of adversity within the family, but certainly attending a small private Christian school is something that um, will come into play here in this application because these types of schools simply have less resources at, at their disposal. For example, I think they only have two or three advanced placement courses and there's only like 30 or 40 kids in each graduating class. So it's a lot more difficult to get some of those sought after research positions or internships or summer camps. And it just is the case that students who are further away from um, universities and these kinds of resources simply have a more difficult time pursuing them. And so that will also come into play as we discuss their resume and essays. So academically, they've done very well. They're ranking within the top 15%. They've scored excellent on the ACT. And that weighs a little bit more than the class rank because ranking is such a small school, it's, it can be quite hard to determine where a student is going to rank relative to their peers. And so seeing the, the ACT 34, um, I haven't included the school profile here, but the admissions reviewer would have seen the school profile and the average ACT at their school is something like a 22. And so they're scoring um, quite high relative to their classmates. And so that's uh, another piece of context that will come into play in this application. So let's take a look at their resume. So we're starting off with some STEM experiences. And so it's pretty cool that they applied for and eventually received the Aerospace Scholar Internship, um, that only about a third of those students are selected. And so um, that obviously demonstrates that they're trying to um, leave their hometown and community and try and find um, some different opportunities around the state, but also across the country, having gone to a mechanical engineering camp at the University of Kansas, um, which also fits into their first choice major of uh, mechanical. Um, they've also had an internship too. So even though they've come from a small town, they haven't let it limit their opportunities. And it's impressive to see that they have um, gone above and beyond expectations to try and pursue their interests and explore their goals and future goals and curiosities. And so they've also demonstrated leadership at their high school and in their community, having played varsity baseball, uh, serving as an Eagle Scout, and then also being nominated and elected for um, Texas Boy State and even serving in a leadership position at Boy State. And so we're seeing early on that they have both a, a fit for their major and then also a demonstrated uh, leadership and service within their communities. It looks like they've played most of the sports at their school. They've also served on the city, uh, city council. And they've had a few jobs and a couple of different other uh, achievements and awards, which also stand out. And so they're, they're quite well-rounded as well. It looks like they've uh, also re received most of the awards that they could have been eligible for um, at their high school. And they have an extensive record of service and volunteering as well. And so um, we're seeing here that they're highly involved in their church, that they've done a mission trip in Costa Rica, that they've served at the Republican convention and that they've done some of the disaster cleanup efforts as well. It's a very well-rounded student. And it's pretty obvious early on that they're maximizing the resources in their environment. And that's one of the criteria that admissions reviewers are looking for. What do you have access to and what are you doing with those opportunities? So let's take a look at the SAA first. And if at any point you want to pause and read these essays a little bit closer, I recommend that you do so. So they start off early on with a illustration of their mission trip uh, in yeah, in Central America. And 
sharing some nice anecdotes here about sharing their uh, love for music with some of the local people that they were working with and establishing early on this um, uh, theme about diversity and establishing intercultural and cross-cultural relationships despite having some language barriers. And that transitions to the environment in which they were raised. So living in a small town where everybody knows everybody. And we receive two different um, paragraphs here. The first one is kind of a, a optimistic and positive portrait. Then also the second one is a discussion of some adversity that one of their childhood friends had experienced, which obviously in a small community can hit um, families and their neighbors particularly hard. And so we are receiving some thoughtful illustrations and context to the type of environment and family that they're raised in. Um, and that's something that is an effective way to use a student's SAA. So again, we learn more about that they have less than 30 students per grade. Yeah, only one AP and a few dual credit courses. And here they, they're explicit with the differences in resources. It's easier to participate in many more things than if I had attended a large public school. So that's one of the benefits, right? Like you can be play ba baseball and basketball and golf and be the chaplain and the president. And whereas it's much harder to do if you're at a Westwood or Anderson or Westlake High School, for example, or in Plano. Um, and then we'll learn later on, they talk about some of the downsides of, of attending such a small school. And so they're introducing nuance by comparing and contrasting and weighing some of the pros and cons. And they talk a little bit about their internship. So we have a, a nice conclusion that is suggesting they're fit for major. Um, and then they tie everything together in um, by concluding about, um, yeah, bringing their cajon to, to Honduras and also with their NASA internship. And so one way to address your fit for major is to discuss some of the characteristics and temperaments. So they're talking about the relationship between creativity and, and solving technical problems. They cite a specific example at their school where they're like, hey, like that looks kind of weird. Maybe I could um, look at ways to do that better in the future or even modify the existing layout of the sidewalks in order to make the building plan a little bit more efficient. Um, they provide another example under that same umbrella of fixing inefficient systems. Uh, by citing an experience at the uh, Kansas Mechanical Engineering Camp and also getting some exposure to CAD and 3D printing. On the same theme of solving problems, they talk about uh, their internship at Longhorn Labs and also getting to meet other real-world professionals, which obviously informs their first-choice major of, of studying engineering. And then in leadership, I think this is a fairly common approach to talk about servant leadership. That's a theme that comes up with uh, many Christian students or those of faith who are um, committed to community service or their communities or, or summer camps, for example, by having leadership be an extension of their faith. And so they th start with that and they touch on some of their baseball skills and they move on to their experiences with Boy Scouts and achieving Eagle Scout and some of the leadership positions they'd occupied along the way. And so there's a couple different approaches you can take in the leadership short answer. And what they've done here is, is touching on four different activities that are uh, demonstrating that they're well-rounded students. And it also um, shows that they're more than just some of their STEM interests. And so this is what universi university reviewers are looking for when they have in mind a student who is well-rounded. And so we're getting a nice portrait here from the SAA and also from the leadership short answer that they're, you know, a thoughtful leader who is willing to, you know, make friends from different groups and serve as a mentor to younger students. I think this is a pretty cool short answer. I had never really read one like it or seen any of my clients talk about an adopted family member, which I think is pretty interesting, especially one um, that they had uh, located in China and coming over at such a young age. And I think it's pretty neat that they're, uh, yeah, talking about their, their sister in their diversity essay and how that sort of helped them open up and, um, yeah, treat each of their, their school classmates like their brothers and sisters, which I guess you have to when your school only has 100 or 150 students in it. And so they talk a little bit about um, some of the I guess this could also qualify for the leadership short answer as well, um, planning the junior senior prom, um, but also the importance of teamwork. And so we're touching on a couple different themes here that again is showcasing the student's personality and that their ability to work well in teams, um, follow through, execute and, and get things done. So this is uh, a similar theme to fixing inefficient systems, but also understanding that engineering is a very human centered uh, discipline and process. And so 
Um, throughout here, we have a, a very balanced portfolio and one that uh, demonstrates how they are, you know, making the most of the opportunities in at their in their hometown, at their high school, and their family, but also across the state of Texas by doing things like Boy State and um, the NASA internship, for example. And so I think this is a really cool example of, uh, of a diverse student because this is a feeder school that doesn't send that many students to UT Austin. Um, I had checked and I think that they'd sent maybe like two or three students to UT in like the like in the past 10 years. And so it's, you know, pretty impressive what they've done relative to, you know, the more common types of applicants that an admissions reviewer is going to see receive, you know, coming from a large suburban high school where um, the you know, families very well off financially, and they have access to a lot of different resources um, within their environment. I think this is very clearly a five. Um, I think some reviewers may not understand the or may not give credit to the context in which they're applying, being that there's not that many resources available at their small Christian school. Uh, I think definitely this student could have received a six, especially if the a reviewer had come from a similar background to themselves. Um, but I think it says a very solid five. I think it's possible they could have gotten a 5.5. Uh, one reason it might be possible they got a 5.5 is they did gain early admission to mechanical engineering. They're in that first wave of applicants that found out in December. Um, they were denied honors, but that's not especially surprising because getting into engineering honors requires you to be like in the top, you know, two, you know, two or three percent of your class scoring a 1550 plus on the SAT and getting a, a perfect or near perfect review score. Um, but they did very well in the admissions process. They got into, I think, everywhere that they applied, including um, notably Purdue and Georgia Tech. And so um, they'll be on UT Austin's campus in the fall, and I think they'll be an excellent contribution to the 40 Acres and the Mechanical Engineering Program. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can find more helpful information at techsadmissions.com slash blog. And in the information section of this video, I provide links to a free online email consultation if you're interested in potentially working together, and links to my book, Your Ticket to the 40 Acres, and my premium course, Getting Into Texas Universities. Thanks, and I hope to see you again soon.